I've got 26 Super Famicom games to show you, and I'm going to try to fit it all into one video. Starting off with a big hitter, we've got Kiki Kai Kai, uh, Nazo no Kuro Manto. This is the original, the first, Pocky and Rocky, which is a pretty expensive game if this was the Super Nintendo version. And even the Japanese version can go for $80 or $90. I was lucky to find this in Kyoto for like $40. It is a sort of like a, it's a shooter where you're playing as this um, sort of like priestess and you've got a little raccoon buddy. That's, uh, I think, what player two can control. And you basically just like blow up uh, Japanese spirits. It's really interesting. And then you end up like fighting Western like ghosts and skeletons. Very fun game. Highly creative. Can't recommend it enough, especially if you can play it through other nefarious means, not necessarily needing the original cartridge. Then we go to Final Fight Guy. Final Fight Guy? Guy? I'm not sure, but I love the Final Fight series. I have all of the games for the Super Famicom. This is, as far as I know, a remake, sort of, of the first Final Fight, only you can play as Guy, which you could play as in the original arcade version, but I think they had to cut him out so that they could fit the arcade port to the Super Nintendo. So, fun game. There's actually, the complete version comes with a CD, uh, but I've never I've never actually seen it. I'm guessing it's a, it's a soundtrack of the game. Here we've got Gradius 3, the third game in the famous Konami vertically scrolling, or no, it's actually horizontally scrolling, as I'm remembering. I'm not a big fan of Gradius 3. There's a lot of slowdown. I don't really care for the enemy designs. I think it's a bit kind of a too slow. Although, look, it's a 1990 shooter. It definitely was blazing a trail, but I think there were definitely some better shooters to come, especially for the, the Super Famicom. Next, we've got Super R-Type, put out by IREM in 1991. I love R-Type 1 for the PC Engine, so I can't wait to put in Super R-Type and see what they can do. And if I'm remembering correctly, I don't know if it was R-Type or if, not the, I mean, the original R-Type or Super R-Type, maybe the same people worked on it, but they would go on to develop games for the Neo Geo, like Polestar and Blazing Star. I know someone in the comments already corrected me about that, but I am drawing a blank. Here we have Final Fight Tough. This is Final Fight 3. This is a bit of an expensive cartridge, being anywhere from $90 to $100 if you're in Japan. I know Final Fight 3 in America is pretty expensive. I don't think it's worth it. I'm a huge fan of the Final Fight series, but Final Fight Tough is an okay game. I don't know if it's $100 worth it. Final Fight 1 and 2, I think, are the better titles, with Final Fight 2, I think, being the best one. So this the side. Space Bazooka. I had this in America because my dad had a Super Scope. You can see here it is for the Super Scope. It's imagine you're like in Gundams, only it's first person and you're just using the Super Scope to blast your enemies. It's a very short game, but this is so fun. It is one of my favorite games for the Super Nintendo and probably my favorite Super Scope game. Here is SimCity 2000. I remember I had a demo of SimCity 2000 for the PC and you could play it for 10 minutes and or it's like a 10 minutes or an hour. After a certain point, the computer would just start randomly spawning natural disasters. And that's how they got you to, to quit the demo and go out to buy the real game. This is sort of a sequel, I suppose, to the original SimCity, which came out in English Oh, no, actually, no, I have the box over there for the Super Famicom. I remember they were trying to come out with one. Nintendo, I think, was developing the original SimCity for the NES slash Famicom, but it never came out. And then eventually Imagineer came out with SimCity 2000 for the Super Nintendo. See, here's Snoopy Concert. I picked this up as a recommendation. You can see it's supposed to go with the Famicom mouse. I actually don't even know what this is, like, how are you even supposed to play this game? <laughs> I just thought people said it was good, so I'm, I'm going to get around to playing that eventually. Then we have a game that is not so good. I don't like it that much, but we get Romancing Saga. You can see here I bought it at a book off for, for about $2. Came out in 1991, a Square game. I think this is the first in the Saga series. No, actually, didn't some games come out for the Game Boy? I don't know if they came out before or after this one. I have played... Uh, Saga 3, they released it as 
Final Fantasy Legends 3. I didn't like it that much then, and I hate Romancing Saga. I don't understand how to play it. I, I know someone very close to me who loves Romancing Saga and can't and actually ended up beating the game. I can't put more than 10 minutes into this game without just throwing my arms up in frustration. I do not like Romancing Saga at all. <laughs> Look, if you like, hey, if you like Romancing Saga, that's fine. People are going to like different things. It's just I do not like Romancing Saga. Next, we get Return of Double Dragon. I'm really hoping this is better than Double Dragon, or is it Double? Yeah, Double Dragon 3 for the Famicom, which is not a good game. Don't recommend it. Double Dragon 1 and 2 for the Famicom. Great games, amazing beat-em-ups that despite, you know, you know, 20, 30 years later, still have few games have surpassed the original Double Dragons. And I'm really looking forward to playing the Super Nintendo version. We got a, oh, and speaking of beat-em-ups, here is Batman Returns, the movie tie-in game released in 1993 by Konami. This is, it's just a straight up sort of final fight slash Streets of Rage, but you're playing as Batman. Very fun. It's a good weekend game where you can just put it in on a Saturday. You can probably beat it within a couple of hours as long as you're critical about your gameplay. It's not that difficult and it is very fun. So let's put... Batman Returns to the side. Here we've got Lady Stalker, a 1995 game published by Taito. Looks like it was uh, developed by Climax. I have not actually played this yet. I think it was like a 2 or $3 game when I found it at Hard Off. So it's just one of those things that I've kind of got on the back burner, but I really want to play. And it looks like actually, is that the... Yeah, it looks like some of the glue starting to come off there. That's a, I wonder what's going to happen in like 20 years as all this glue starts to dry and hit the air. Oh boy, I'm not, not looking forward to that, needing to maintain my games that way. Here we've got Street Fighter 2 Turbo, the game that made Street Fighter as far as I'm aware. I know Street Fighter 2 is very popular, but I think Street Fighter 2 Turbo is, I think, one of the, you know, the, the more sought after version. Someone in the comments can correct me wrong. I love the Street Fighter series, but I don't know that many details about it. And it's, just, you know, it's Street Fighter. It's the, the one you want to play. Wasn't it Street Fighter 2 Turbo, the one that they ported in like the mid-2000s for the Xbox just to bring back Street Fighter um, onto the, onto the, in, into the internet age? And there was another one that I think was released for the Dreamcast that's very expensive that has internet capability, and that's why it's so expensive. Here we've got Turtles in Time. This is... It used to be more expensive than it is now. It used to be like a $60 game in Japan. Now it's gone down to $40, I think, as the Super Nintendo collecting has died down. You can see here there's a little bit of yellowing to the back, but I don't mind. It's a, it's a really fun arcade game. Very cool. Put out by in 1992 by Konami. I, I can't recommend it enough. Again, you're probably better off playing it through more nefarious means instead of spending $40 on the cartridge. But I know it's a very beloved game, and I was never able to actually clear it, but I did have fun with the time that I put into it. Yeah, let's start out with Rockman 7. Here we go. So the Rockman series is really interesting to me because for the longest time, it was coming out for the original Famicom, the NES, for years after the Super Nintendo came out. If I'm remembering correctly... It was in like 1990 that Rockman 3 came out, and then 91 was 4, 92 was 5, and then 93 would have been 6. I'm, I'm probably a year or two off with those. But then they only came out with Rockman 7 in 1995 for the Super Nintendo. And what actually was Rockman X? Rockman X, 1993. Okay, so I guess they were just doing like concurrent development. They just decided, because don't these take place in different timelines? Because here you've got Rockman, and then this is like a different Rockman. I'm not into Rockman lore. I love the games, but I don't know that much about the story. Rockman X, I've put some time into it. My great shame is that I've never actually been able to traditionally beat a Mega Man game. I usually have to use save states because I can't be bothered to keep repeating the last few levels over and over again. But I do at least like to use these original cartridges to sort of get better at the games get up to the final levels. And then I'm like, eh, okay, I can stop. I, I, don't, I don't need to completely beat it on the original cartridge to feel satisfied with the game. Then we've got Rockman X2 here. When did this come out? 1994. So wow, they're, they're just pumping out Mega Man games. Cause think about it. They're coming out with like four, five, six at the same time. They're releasing X and X2 and then they come out with seven. 
And then when did X3 come out? X3, by the way, is very expensive for the American version. However, the Japanese version is not more than $20. Here we go, 1995. So was that the same? No, okay, no. So they're coming out year after year with Mega Man games. And then today, what do we get? I don't think we get anything. We get Mega Man 11. I guess that's, sir. has 12 come out yet? I don't know. I don't know. But beautiful artwork, great sprites, fantastically fast game. Really, I think it's 2X2 two and 3 that I need to play. Next, Super Mario Kart, the OG Mario Kart, made by 1992 in Nintendo, by Nintendo, in Nintendo, oh God. <laughs> I'm getting my prepositions wrong. This is a fairly fun game. It's actually not too, it's just like a slower F-Zero where, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure people in the comments are going to go nuts with this, but aren't in Mario Kart, you're not actually controlling the racer, you're just moving the map. It's like you, when you think about that and when you actually play the game, your mind just starts to bend when you think about how when you're pushing forward, you're not moving your racer forward. You're moving the map forward. So that like blows my mind. I'm not a big fan of Super Mario Kart. I think, and I've said this about the other Mario Karts like Double Dash in the past, but I think that Mario Kart 8 has just surpassed all previous Mario Karts. That I know it's, well, no, there's other 2D Mario Karts. There's Mario Kart DS, Mario Kart 7. This is this is the one that I think is going to be your probably your best 2D Mario Kart, but you know, you've always got the DS ones if you really liked it. Then we get the Super Mario Collection. I actually used to have this when I was a kid, the American version, and this has it's like like I just my first exposure to like a game remake because they remade Super Mario 1 Lost Levels two and three with like new uh, with a new engine and then wasn't there also a version of this that came with super mario world yeah i'm, pr I'm pretty sure there was although i've never actually seen it in person i don't think that came out in japan here we've got gundam f91 this is sort of like a tactical strategy game where you're controlling mobile suits i've put a little bit of time into this it's fine it's again when you're playing strategy games from like the early 1990s they're so technology dependent that Today, you're probably just going to think that it's slow and boring, even though at the time it probably was like, oh my god, I'm, I'm moving my Gundams around on the map and I'm having these cool battles. But today, it's just like, eh, there's probably, there's probably newer and faster ones. Super Aleste. I believe there's actually an Aleste collection that was released for the Switch either this year or it's coming out next year. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that like the Aleste games released in 1992 by Toho and compile this is i want to say a 30 or 40 dollar game in japan i don't know if it got released in north america but it's one of those scrolling shooters that uh, i think you're going to have a lot of fun with if you're playing it on the super nintendo then we get a beat em up we have rushing beat the rushing beat series i think it was a three title series for the super nintendo released by jalico this is sort of a, it's just another beat em up in the vein of final fight or Streets of Rage. I haven't put any time into this, so I can't tell you if it's good or not, but it's got three It's got three games in the series, so it can't be terrible. Next, Wild Tracks. What was this called? Oh, Stunt Race FX. This is a crazy game. See, you can see by the long teeth, it's got one of the special chips. It was Nintendo's attempt at making like a 3D polygonal racer. I've, I had it when I was a kid and I put a lot of time into it, but today I just look at it and I'm like, wow, these are weird. This is all janky looking and slow. I'd much rather play F-Zero if I'm going to be completely honest with you. So we'll put that aside. I don't want to say it's bad, but I think, you know, racers, same thing as strategy games. You're probably going to have a better time with more modern stuff. Here we've got Shin Megami Tensei 2 put out by Atlas. I can't remember the year. I believe Shin Megami Tensei 1 came out for the... There was one that came out for the Famicom, and then this came out for the Super Famicom. Just a post-apocalyptic RPG related to the Persona series. I picked it up because I want, to put a, I want to put a little bit of effort into it just so I can better understand the Persona series on the whole, but I haven't gotten around to Shin Megami Tensei 2 yet. We will end the cartridge showcase with Spriggan Powered, released by Nagzatsoft in 1996. This is another expensive game for the Super Famicom. I think 
The cartridge is anywhere from $80 to $90. I picked this up at Mandarake and Nakano Broadway in Tokyo for like $30 or $40 because I always have cheap cartridge prices over there. It's, it's pretty fun. I've never been able to clear it, but I have put more than a few hours into this game. You're in a sort of mobile suit and it's, a, it's horizontally scrolling. You have a bunch of different like elementally based power-ups. I believe this is sort of like a spiritual sequel to Spriggan, like Say Spriggan for the PC Engine. It was a PC Engine CD game that's actually very hard to find now. And like that like is very fantastical. And then they went with a sort of sci-fi theme for Spriggan Powered. I don't know why they did that, but they still made a pretty good game. That is all of my bare cartridges for the Super Famicom. And actually after this, I'm going to take a break and I'm going to show off all of my boxes for my Super Famicom games. And I'll show you some of the manuals, getting into some of the artwork with that stuff. But I have a lot of Super Famicom games. And if you're watching this far into the video, I will say this, collecting is a disease and playing games is the cure. I've been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. Thanks for watching and mahalo.